Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to go through questions 31, 32, 33, and 34. These four right here. All right, so the question 31, it says that if the point 30, or 30 is a point on a graph of y is equal to f of x, which of the following must be on the graph of y equals minus f of x? All right, well, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph a function that does contain the point three zero. So I think I will choose uh, the point, the function square root, square root of x um, minus three, minus three right there. So this, zoom in a little, this does contain the point three zero. Okay, so this has the point three zero. And so what we're asked is, if 3, 0 is a point on the graph of y is equal to f of x, which of these four points must be on the graph of y is equal to minus f of x? Well, the graph of y is equal to minus f of x, this minus sign will have the effect of flipping my function across the x-axis. We remember that reflection about the x-axis, y is equal to f minus f of x. So if you take the negative of a function, you flip it across the x-axis. And so... If I just put in here a minus in front, we can see that it just flips my function across the x-axis. And so what point is still on of these four options? Which point is still on the function y equals minus f of x? Well, we can see that the answer is 3, 0. 3, 0 is still on uh, the function y is equal to minus f of x. Whether I have that uh, minus there or not, we can see that um, our function, our both functions contain this point three zero. So flipping it across the x-axis uh, uh, doesn't uh, alter the fact that the point three zero is on that function is on both functions. All right, so that's that first um, answer there. So really, what you needed to know was the effect of this minus sign um, on a given function, and of course the fact that the point three zero uh, is on the x-axis. Point three zero is on the x-axis. When so, when the function flipped across the x-axis, um, this point three zero will will remain. Um, okay, so if three zero is a point on the graph of y is equal to f of x, this is question number thirty-two. Which of the following must be on uh, on the graph of y equals f of minus x? So let me just go here go back to my original function maybe, and I want the function y equals f of minus x. All right, well. If I look here, the by replacing x with minus x, you can see I get reflection across the y-axis. I get reflection across the y-axis. Let me just put that in. So if I replace x here with a minus x, bring this over so you can see it. Here I put in a minus. We can see that our function is reflected. Go back. So it reflects across the y-axis. And so but the question is then, which of these four points is on uh, the graph y equals f of minus x? Well, you can see that the point is minus 3, 0. If 3, 0 is on this side, when it reflects across the, the y-axis, minus 3, 0 will be on the graph of y equals f of minus x. And so our answer there is uh, d, minus 3, 0. Okay, number 33, if the 0, 3 is a point on the graph of y is equal to f of x, which of the following must be on the graph of y equals 2 times f of x? All right, well, 0, 3 is not on this um, function here. So let me just go back to this function. And I want 0, 3, so that's this point right here, to be on uh, my function. So I'll just put in plus 3. That will shift my... Uh, function up three places. So there we go. And so now we can see that uh, 0, 3 is part of this function, the function root x plus 3. And so that, that is my y is equal to f of x. So y is equal to 2 times f of x. What, I, what this 2 does is it takes any point on my original function and it multiplies the y coordinate of that point by 2. Okay, so I'll say that again. The effect of this 2 here out in front of my function is to take any point that's on my original function and multiply the y-coordinate 
by two. So if I look at, I have the point zero three right there, the Y coordinate of that point is three. And so the, this is my Y is equal to F of X. So Y equals two times F of X will have, will contain the point zero six, six, which is two, three times two. So I can just verify that if I put in here, I want to remind myself, this is, uh, I want to put a parentheses around my function here. And I'm going to multiply this entire function by two. And there it is. You can see that our function shifts upward like so. And my, what has happened, the difference between these functions, between, let me just erase that to there, between this function and two times that function is that the every point in the original function has, has its y coordinate multiplied by two. And that is the effect of having that two out in front of the function. And so the point zero six, zero six, that's C, answer C is the answer for question number 33. All right, last one, question number 34. If three zero is a point on the graph, well, three zero, so I'm gonna go back to uh, my original function, y is uh, the uh, root x, let's get rid of my parentheses as well, root x minus three, because I know that that contains the point Bring it up. I know that that contains the point uh, three zero. Could have chosen a different function, of course, but I'm going to choose that one. So if three zero is a point in the graph, y is equal to f of x, which of the following must be on the graph of y equals one half f of x? Well, so question 34 is, is like question number 33. Again, the effect of this half out in front of the function or multiplying the function by this half is that you multiply all of the points in f of x the y coordinate of those points by one half. Well, the y coordinate, um, one point that we have is three zero, of course, and the y coordinate of three zero is zero. And so if I take one half um, of the y coordinate that is zero multiplied by a half, which is still zero. So I would expect that if I multiply this function, root x minus three by a half, that the point three zero will still be on that function because multiplying the y coordinate zero by a uh, half will is still zero. So let me just confirm that for myself. I'm going to multiply my function by zero point five, and there we have it. So you can see that my function has gotten flatter, but it still contains that point three zero. All right, because we, the original function contained the point three zero. The new function multiplies the y, the y coordinates of all the points of the original function by one half. Zero times a half is still zero. So that's that point. So that point three zero is still there. Uh, and so the answer for question number 34 is A. Point three zero is still on um, y equals one half of x. And that's those four questions complete.